Today, today I want to talk about the importance of updating. Uh, it's something that a lot of people I find will often say the phrase, do I really need to update? Oh, that's just annoying when it comes up and asks me to update. I just say, remind me later. But the severity of that is huge. So I'll explain a little bit further in this video. Something often that I hear in business environment is we don't update our computers, that's annoying. We just push it back, push it back, and eventually we'll update it, not realizing the impact that that could have. So I'm going to discuss further in this video one of the bigger flaws, if you will, or vulnerabilities that Apple has had on some of their devices recently, and a customer that came in to us um, having a less than ideal experience where they were hacked and it could have been linked to this update. You may be given a false sense of security when you see videos online or promotional videos suggesting that your device is secure and the company has your data as their highest concern with its security. To a degree, what they're suggesting or what they're saying is true. And by no means in this video am I targeting any company. In particular, this is something that plagues all companies. Um, in this video, I'm using Apple as a example, but so much so all other companies have been um, attacked or at a threat. It's something that's a constantly evolving threat scape. Um, your smart fridge could be hacked. Okay. Just wanted to put that out first before I go ahead and give some examples. So recently, iOS 15, let me get the exact number. It's iOS 15.6.1 had a security flaw that Apple released updates for. It plagued both their mobile devices and their, their iPads, if you will. Um, the security flaw was that an attacker, there was two flaws rather, an attacker could gain access to execute code from a web interface. So just by visiting a website on Safari, let's say, um, a hacker could then execute code in the mobile device, gaining access to whatever they want. The next threat was that they could actually execute something in kernel mode. So kernel mode being like the, the root mode or the um, machine level mode, if you will, behind the device. So once they gain that access, they're privy to information and control over the whole device itself. So it's a vulnerability that's huge because it doesn't matter what um, software you may be running to prevent this. If there's a hole of that level, they can bypass all those systems, get on top, and then do whatever they want. I'm going to read an article that Forbes published. They cite in it some uh, information from Sophos, or Sophos, however you want to pronounce that. Um, they are a big network cybersecurity uh, company that sell firewalls and those sort of applications to help with security. So one of their security, security analysts found some um, uh, weaknesses, some real time, what could happen if this vulnerability was used. So I'm just going to read straight from this and it's going to explain some of those vulnerabilities. Sophos principal research scientist Paul Ducklin explains how the CVE 2022 32893 flaw in WebKit which underpins the Safari browser, could allow a booby-trapped web page to trick iPhones, iPads, and Macs into running unauthorized and untrusted software code. Simply put, a cyber criminal could implant malware on your device even if all you did was view an otherwise innocent web page. He warns that avoiding Safari won't help. The vulnerability potentially affects many more apps and system components than just Apple's own Safari browser. The second vulnerability, 
patched in iOS 15.6.1, tracked as CVE 2022-32894, could allow an attacker who has already gained a basic foothold on the Apple device by exploiting the WebKit bug to jump from controlling just a single app to taking over the operating system kernel itself. These are the sort of administrative superpowers normally reserved for Apple itself. Ducklin explains this could allow an attacker to spy on apps, access the data on your device, change your security settings, read your messages, and activate your camera and mic. Scary stuff. So I had a customer that came into the store about a week or two ago. They said, I've been hacked, I had a call, I was told that I needed to secure my account. Once I had completed the call, I checked my bank account, all my funds had been stolen. At first glance, I thought that this was a phishing attempt. So phishing being just like normal recreational phishing, you put out a line of bait, someone will hook on and they get your information that way. Phishing, although with a P, um, that's the simplest way to explain it. So I asked those probing questions. Did you give information out? Did they ask for this? What, what questions did they ask? The customer explained that not only did they not ask for sort of personally identifying information, rather they had him open up an app open up another app and view a few things but they never really asked for sort of him to access the bank and then send funds out or give us your login details he said that as he accessed apps on his phone an iphone running 15.6.1 ios that they were confirming oh yes i can see that on your phone oh yes i can see that this is running so at the time I didn't know about this vulnerability and I wondered what they had done. So I looked up, found the article online explaining all of these details, realized that most likely the attacker had asked him to open up a web page of which he had gained access to the phone and then once on the phone called him spoofed as anyone, asked him to do a few tasks to sound non-suspicious to confirm that that was the rightful phone maybe to confirm a few misnomer details what's your name um, did we get the right account so does your number start with this it was never asking necessarily for information to come back but confirming information at which point they had enough access to steal the money to execute something to go forward that's scary the scariest part about it all is once we had updated the phone and made sure that everything was good and secure, I then went over to my personal iPad, which I hadn't used in the better part of a month, maybe longer. Went into settings, went to about, and saw that it was running 15.6.1 in its iOS version. I promptly updated that and I thought that I needed to release this video. It's something that we don't often check for, and even myself, knowing the alarming rate of vulnerabilities and the need to constantly update our devices, if I was someone that hadn't updated my iPad and was running a vulnerable, vulnerable version of this iOS. So if there's any takeaway from this video, it's that check any of your Apple devices, make sure that they're updated fully. And then further from that, what point this drives home is that we must constantly update our devices. Um, Microsoft releases updates, I believe it's every Tuesday, um, and it's constant. And a lot of the concern that I will find with people is they'll say, oh, I'm always updating, always updating. The reason you're always updating is because you're always defending against the next threat. So please update, please update. If you have a concern about a computer being vulnerable, we can help. We can run security audits, we can run a scan, 
on those devices, make sure that no CVEs are running. Those are common, commonly vulnerable. Um, let me check that. Common vulnerabilities and exposures. Sometimes I think of it as common vulnerabilities and exploits. Uh, it's a pretty similar thing. Basically, if a new threat, a zero-day threat, something that needs to be patched has come out, we need to look for an update for that. So we use software with our businesses that we look after, that we scan their devices, primarily for Windows devices. However, we can help with Mac as well. Um, and we check if there's any unpatched software uh, from third parties as well as the operating system itself. On your own, in your personal time, check if your devices are updated. If you need help as a business, please feel free to call us, contact us. We can help you to make sure that you're not um, vulnerable at all, but also updated. So thanks so much for listening to this. I hope that this has helped in some way. My name is Jordan. I work at Ingest Services and, and our biggest focus, if you will, is uh, cyber security. However, we do also help with IT management. If you need uh, VoIP systems through 3CX or backup solutions, we also do that. Thank you so much.